，找来。是，长官。Christmas, baby. Merry Christmas to you. Are you sure you have to go to work today? I know. It sucks. Listen, when you get home tonight, we'll celebrate. All right? Mm. Are you sure? Because I got you something. <laughs> Babe, we said no gifts. Come on. I know. I couldn't help it. I love it. Good. I love you. Listen, it's probably gonna be another day of waiting around for a freaking cat to jump out of a tree. I have some errands to run today. Do you want anything special for dinner tonight? Just you. Unless you feel like making that uh, pasta again. Remember the one with the uh, onions and the chicken and the mushrooms and the peppers? Oh no, go ahead, keep it up. You'll be pleasantly surprised with a bowl of your favorite cereal. I love cereal. Nothing wrong with cereal. You're lucky I love you. Tease me with a good time. I'm on my way. Come on, Jen. One coffee, three creams. Have a Merry Christmas. You too, babe. Thanks. This is go for Bradley, go for Bradley. Is that a 1054? Come take a look at this. What else do we know about him? Not much, other than it was released from Northside about a week ago. Left the note. Who is this sick fuck? That's your job, detective. Let me introduce you to Miss Clayton. She found them this morning when she came home from work. Officer. I'm so sorry for your loss. Just have a few questions. Have a seat. Merry Christmas.
Tell me about Robert. You want to know? What happened? He loved me. He loved his job. He just never should have taken that assignment. What assignment? Some government thing, I don't know. I never knew what he did. Tell me about his original conviction. Ten years ago, just after New Year's, 2000. Robert went away on assignment like he always did. This was no different. They said they caught his car on camera, hit a man walking, died on impact. The more you tell me, the more I can help. He never killed that man. But they sure tortured him like he did. When your husband was in prison, did he have any friends or enemies that you can think of? It's prison. <laughs> but he did talk about him, Mark. He said they were both wrongly sentenced. This is my card. Call me if you think of anything else. But I'm sorry. I'm gonna figure this out. Merry Christmas, Janet. Christmas. Hey, how was it? Crazy. Yeah, crazy good. Better now. Good. How was your day? Good. Just hung around here, did some research for work, studied for the bar exam. Oh yeah, how's that going? Oh, it's really hard. But I think the firm I'm working with is gonna hire me on if I pass. I gotta sign a new case. What about? Nothing important. What's for dinner? Yes. What's this? Nothing. You made pasta. I did. Merry Christmas. What? <laughs> Do you remember? This morning when I said I'd be home tonight and we can celebrate? Yes. Are you serious right now? Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> Gotcha. 
what you find out. I'll tell you what I know. His name's Robert Clayton. He was a US Marine before doing 10 years for murdering his partner over at Northside. Turns out there was no proof he did it. He was released about a week ago. Well, haven't you learned? They're all innocent. Yeah, but get this, his original sentence was life. Someone fought the system to have his file expunged. And they gave him therapy. Weird, right? Yeah, very. Go ahead, keep looking into it. Yes, sir. Happy holidays, Northside Correctional. Warden, please. Warden speaking. Warden, this is Detective Bradley with the Goffstown Police Department. I'm investigating the recent release of Mr. Robert Clayton. I don't know how I can help. He was murdered. I'd like to come in and speak with you. How's tomorrow morning? Good. See you today. Gotham Police Department. Chief. I'm out of Clayton's. Something's going on here. Have a seat. How are you feeling? Happy, I'm assuming that you're released now. Where is it? I don't know. Tell me where it is. I don't know. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. I understand. I haven't figured it out yet. Where is it? I don't know! Tell me where I don't have it. have it! Have you tried what I suggested? Are they here to see the warden? Sure, he's been expecting you. Thank you. All right, yeah. Warden? Have a seat. I'm here investigating the release of Mr. Robert Clayton. What can you tell me about him? Very little. We released him about a week ago. He did 10 years of murdering his partner. Apparently the system was wrong. 
seemed like a nice guy. You know, he kept to himself, was married, two kids. He was happy to finally get out. Why? He's dead. Does he have any enemies or anyone on the outside that you may know of? Not that I knew of. Listen, I don't know much more than what I've told you. Did he receive any special treatment while he was here? As you know, we're a private correctional facility for ex-military and government personnel. His treatment was basic food, closed cell, visitation once a month, and if lucky enough to be released, a government-appointed psychologist. It's the same for everyone. Robert Clayton was no different. How did he get out? That's not for me to determine. Warden, you should know every single one of your inmates and why they're released. His case was reopened and discharged on the basis of not enough evidence for a full conviction. His sentence was shortened. It happens all the time. Listen, Doug, that's all I know. I have to do rounds. Call me if you need anything else. Thank you. One more question, real quick. Who reopened his case? That's also none of my business. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Hello, doctor. This is Rick. Just wanted to confirm my appointment for this afternoon. Thank you, sir. Because you're the best. Okay, set him in. Mark, I'm gonna give you something. It's gonna help you sleep, okay? Trust me, it's gonna be okay. I'm sure you're happy to be finally released. How are you feeling? Okay, yes. Are you ready to get started on your final assignment? Hey, do you know that guy? Yeah, his name's Mark. He's been coming here for a couple days.
It's just a dream. Take a look at this. I know this guy. You do? Something doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? It looks like a suicide to me. It's not a suicide. His name's Mark. He was at the same bar I was at last night. Was he with anyone? No. Funny thing is, he was released from the same exact prison as Robert Clayton a week ago. Do you think it's coincidence? Any ideas? One. Miss Clayton, so sorry to barge in on you again. But I just have one more question. The gentleman that your husband allegedly killed, was there any relationship between those two? Yes, actually, he was his partner. Hmm. Rick, welcome back. How do you feel? I'm tired. I can't sleep. I have no family. Everyone thinks I'm a frickin' murderer. Sometimes the way to deal with frustration is to find where its purpose is. You served your country, young man. <laughs> I killed my partner. Rick, you were placed on watch for your own safety until the dust settled. Something had happened while you were in the inside. For 10 years, I went through hell. Do you even know what happened in there? What they did to me? I don't have it. Never did. What exactly? I don't know. Nothing. The government needs your help once more. I'm not interested. This is not your choice. It's an order from the Pentagon. Babe, are you okay? doesn't make any sense. Here's a guy that served 10 years at a private military prison for murder. A murder nobody has seen. There's no evidence, there's no records, nothing. He gets released and someone wants him dead. And just yesterday, somebody else from that same exact prison shows up dead in an alley. No records on that one either. Are you sure the guy from last night wasn't a suicide? I don't think so. Who are you calling? I love you. Don't wait up.
see you. As you know where to find me, where else would you be? Is Dad still over at the church? Yeah, I think so. Man, it's been a long time. Yeah. Since Ma died? Hey, dog, look at this! You can give me that, it's, it's not a toy. toy. Listen, Doug. Hey, come on. Look, man, it wasn't your fault. Okay, you gotta know that. I know. I know. And you being out here all these years isn't going to bring her back. You know that, right? That's not why I'm here. Then why are you? You would not understand that. Listen, Doug, just because you're a cop doesn't mean you can save the world, okay? And you can't run away every time something bad happens. Is that what you think I did? <laughs> you think I ran away? Then why'd you go? Because I couldn't stand to fucking be around here anymore. Every single day being constantly reminded of what happened. So I thought, maybe, just maybe if I did something good with my life. I don't know, man, I thought it would get easier. That's exactly the reason I became a cop. Just to hope that one day my life would get better. Well, I know why you're here. Can't figure out who's killing those people. What do you mean? Let me ask you this, those people that were released. Wrongful conviction? Look, I've interviewed both the families. I've looked into both the murders. The only connection I can find is the prison system. Bingo. Anything yet? I'm working on it. There's some real shit going on here. Well, stay on top of it. That's why you're a detective, Tug. Thank Frustrations come to surface. 
Why don't you take the night off and just try again tomorrow? Okay? Yes. Send them in. Why me? You are fully trained to do this. This is what you do. You were trained by the best. You are the best. Well, well, well. It's been a while. This is the warden. This is Detective Bradley from the Goffstown Police Department. Please fax me a list of all inmates sentenced for murder in 2000. And then released for wrongful conviction? Certainly, Detective. I'll have my secretary pull the records. What are you thinking? I think it's closer to home than we would like. Let me know if there's anything else you want. Uh, you'll have it shortly. All right, here's what I got. I think Robert and Mark knew each other in prison. According to their files, they were both sentenced for murder in January of 2000, but then released early for good behavior within days of each other. Doesn't make any sense. The coroner say about Mark's death, suicide, murder? He said overdose. Which is weird, because the bartender said he seemed happy to be live. Mm. Just doesn't make any sense. Fact for you, Detective. Thank you, sir. You want to explain this? I wouldn't understand. Really? Try me. This is a recent list of everyone that was released from Northside in January 2000. You're number six on here. My situation's a little different, Doc. <sighs> Ryan, if this is someone's sick wish list, we're running out of time. Why is your name on here? Do you know what's going on? Listen, we were all ex-military, okay? Secret service types, black ops. The whole point was we were sent on a mission in secret that the government did not want public. Who hired you? The NSA. The whole point was to find a missing drive. Wait, what drive, what's on it? Data. Okay, we were each ordered to follow a different member of the NSA, the Secret Service, until the drive surfaced. And then, I, I don't know, man, days later, we were ordered to terminate our partners. I don't understand. Why is your name on here? Why weren't you locked up? Because they led us to believe they were in on it. And then it became a situation where it was fucking kill or be killed. That's why you got six dead and six convictions. <laughs> then we wonder why this country's in the shape that it is. Listen, when an order goes out, whether you fucking agree with it or not, you see it through. This was absolutely no different. This became survival. Who's your direct contact now? I went off grid, Doug, so I, I don't have one. But I can tell you this. If they knew I was talking to you about this, they'd kill us both. You leave it alone, Doug.
Hey, baby. Amy, listen, I know you don't know what's going on. I know, we need to talk. It's just not safe at home, okay? Doug, I- I'll tell you when I see you. I love you. And Amy, trust no one. Okay, I love you. Yes, actually. yourself. Take a look. Know this guy? No. Why? Check your list. No site correctional? Why don't you get over there and figure this out? Yeah. All right, I'm on it.
Get in. Jason, right? Yeah. Three more to go. What's this all about? Why you? I was hired for my particular skill in transcoding encrypted messages. Okay. Okay, so in 99, the government stored some very, very important data on two identical drives as backup. What do you mean data? What kind of data? Top secret military intel, man. I'm talking missions, financials, national security plans, locations of missiles that protect our borders, like a lot. Who has the drive now? The president and the NSA. Okay, so let me better understand this. They order you guys to commit murder, lock you up for 10 years, call it protective custody, only to let you out, then kill you? Pretty twisted, right? Very. I thought this was over a long time ago. You thought wrong. Hey, be careful. These guys, they are the government. They can and will find you if you get too close. Chief Brown. Northside has to be involved. I can't explain, but remember that list? Yeah. Well, those three guys that were killed were on that list. There's three more. I need to find them. All right, well, uh, keep digging and tell me what you find. All right. So, how does it feel to be a hero? He was the enemy. He was the last remaining move. You did your country a great service. Did anyone see you? No. Nah. Great. Just one more thing to do. Sir, excuse me. What's going on? Yes, sir, he's here now. I'll, I'll call you back. That was your boss. I was assigned to house six soldiers that went rogue. It was my understanding that these men killed U.S. military. Why you? Why here? After the news was released about these soldiers, I was given the assignment to put them on top level watch. I did my job. Ten years later, they were released due to lack of evidence. Or so I hear. So you mean innocent? Do you even know what they did? My job is to lock them up, to feed them, and make sure they don't see the light of day. It is not to ask questions. You're right. That's my job. Where are these guys at now? I would keep my distance. If they've managed to hide six government murders for a decade, they probably can hide yours. Is that a threat, Warden? If I find out that you're behind this in any way, I will lock you up behind the very bars that you guard. Be careful. Please see to it that Doug gets the known addresses to the names that he requests. Thank you. Have a good day. He's getting help. Come on, come on. What did I tell you? There's some real shit going on here. Doug, you're gonna end up dead like the rest of them. What do you want me to do, huh? You want me to walk away? Do you have that list? Yes. My name's on it, yeah? 
Yes. Like six names? Yeah, why? Okay. I never went to prison, yet my name is right here on this list. Then who was released? Jesus Christ, Detective Doug. Don't you think it's about time for you to start figuring some shit out at this point? Listen, it's time you start telling me what's going on. Who was your partner? His name was Andrew Akins. Where's Akins now? Figure something out. Stop asking so many fucking questions. service and given the highest of ranks. Why was I locked up again? For your safety. Everyone was that was on the assignment. You were cleared and released. Safety? Trust me. This is it, right? Daniel, trust me. This is the final stage of your treatment. Once completed, you will be rewarded with the highest honors of military ranks. This is for your freedom. Yes, sir. very many murders around here, let alone three. So what do we know? They were all patients at Northside. We think they're all connected. Only problem is, how? I'm gonna give you guys a list of names. Robert Clayton. Mark Swanson. Jason McDaniels. We've got reason to believe that there's gonna be more. Hopefully we can stop it before it gets any further. Not sure if this is related. There was a disturbance last night behind Factory Street. Okay, well, it's three names. It's something to work with. I want everybody to keep their eyes and their ears open. Stay sharp. Get to work. Now get out of here. I get a tip about some suspicious activity down at the pig farm. Get over there after this. All right. Amy. We need to talk. What's up? I think the case you're working is related to what I was assigned. What do you mean? I tried to tell you. I saw on your computer the same names as what I was given. What names? Robert Clayton, Mark Swanson, Jason McDaniels, and some others. Apparently, they spent time at Northside. And they all filed appeals for wrongful conviction and mistreatment. But... Amy, promise me you're not going to look into this. It's not safe. Doug, your brother was on that list. I know. Amy, do not look into it. Okay. Please be careful. All right, I love you. Bye. Now is not a good time. Uh, we need to talk. Right. Unfortunately, we're going to have to reschedule for tomorrow.
You haven't spoken to anyone about the mission, have you? No. Good. Remember your orders. Hey, we got something going on down here at 15 Pine Street. I need you. What's up, guys? Oh, this is not okay. I'm having boys. Rick, are you here? One dead in the kitchen, one ran off. Who is it? Rick, get this. He was number four on the list. What do you think? Daniel? All extra units to 15 Pine Street, Gosstown. Oh. 
There's something going on in this town, Dad. There's something in this town that we've never seen. Can I help? No. Dad, Ryan's involved. He doesn't look good. Is he okay? No. Dad, Ryan's at the cabin. I missed the cabin. I want to help. It's not safe. I'll let you know. take you off this case. Why? Because the NSA and the FBI are both involved? You know I can't do that. My brother's on that list. I don't know. There's nothing I can do. It's out of my hands. I was at the house last night where Rick was murdered. If we could just get in front of it. No, you can't. You take me off this case? Take me off payroll. Doug, figure it out. Sure he has it? Yes! I'm sure! What's this about? I'm investigating the recent murders of some of the inmates that were sentenced here. Yes, I've been hearing about that on the news. How can I help? Did you know any of them? Well, I am the appointed psychologist for all the inmates released from Northside Correctional. What do you know? I'm sorry, but I can't speak about their files. 
Is there anything you'd like to share about Robert, Mark, Rick, or Jason before you started treating them? I treat them all like anyone else. Listen, detective. If you would want to discuss anything further, I'd be more than happy to make an appointment. Just one last question, Doctor. Are you speaking with Daniel or Ryan Bradley currently? I'm sorry, but I can't discuss anything further. Thank you for your time. I need the warrant. Doug, meet FBI agent fellows and NSA agent Hendricks. They will be taking the case over from here on out. Chief, what's going on? In short, this is now a federal investigation. You're to hand over all your materials to these two gentlemen immediately. It is what it is. Chief, I've got... You've to... got nothing. Stevens, do it now. Officer, thank you for your efforts. Chief, I know this is way above our heads, but I don't think we can trust them. Trust who? The government? Less than 10 years ago, the US government backed up military securities onto a drive. I mean everything. Launch codes, military weapons, passwords, encrypted messages, you name it. They said it went missing. Stolen. Now someone's looking for it. What are you what are you talking about? These are the last remaining men that know anything about it. They were all hired to find it. Now they're coming up dead. Why? I think someone knows something about it and they're trying to flesh it out. Damn. What are you saying? Doug, you can't take on the US government. No, I can't. But I'm in way too deep. If I just have a little bit more time, I can probably stop whatever's planned. Doug, you're in way over your head. It doesn't make sense. Why here? Who knows? But we just can't sit and watch from the sidelines with what we know. If you get in the way of a government investigation, you are gonna find yourself in Cuba. Doug, be careful. I'm not supporting this. The last name on that list is my brother, and he's one of the only three remaining. If I give up now, I might as well bury him. Free to go. I'm done. Enjoy the rest of your life.
follow? No. Good. Who's left? Brian. Daniel said he didn't have it. Do you believe him? No. What do we do? We keep looking until we find it. Warden, I brought this over to you ten years ago with an agreement. Do you remember that agreement? Yes. Mr. Warden Sparks, my name is Dr. Stevens. You are being given custody of six soldiers. They are being sentenced to life for espionage and murder. They were part of a covert operation for the recovery of the missing drive. I believe one of them still has it hidden. What drive? A drive worth more money than you and I can ever imagine. We need to find it. Who has it and where it is. Your cooperation will be handsomely rewarded. How do you know someone has it? Because I know. This drive holds top secret intel. Two copies were made in case Y2K caused a computer crash. And what you're involved? This is a direct assignment from Washington. I will be acting as the internal psychologist for all inmates. If it gets out, even for a second, I will hear about it. Your job is to get them talking. How long do we have? As long as it takes. If they have it, I'll get it. I did my best. Is it done? Yes. Good. Now find Ryan and his brother.
Bring it out now. Good work. Why you case, sir? We gotta get this to the commander. Got something here. 43 degrees north, 71 degrees west. It's in New Hampshire, sir. Give me Agent Fellows in the FBI. Yes, sir. FBI. Ryan has the drive and he's on the move. Okay, we're on it. The drive has surfaced. Who's left? Everyone's dead except for Ryan and Steven. Good. Not good. Ryan's brother is a cop who's on the case. Who's his boss? I'm dead. This guy isn't an ordinary cop. He won't go down easy. That's because he's emotionally invested. It's his brother we're after. Make it look like another corrupt cop. Yes, sir. Get me the president. Mr. President. Yes? Operation Y2K a surfacer? Let me guess. Ryan. We think so, sir. This guy's been hiding in our own backyard. Who's on it? FBI agent Fellows, NSA agent Hendricks, sir. This drive became active this morning, and we've got a real problem if this gets out. Make sure this ends quietly. And find him now. Yes, sir. Killing everyone who was involved. Who is? The government, the FBI, the NSA. We're just collateral damage at this point. This doesn't make any sense. Why the FBI? Why the NSA? Who do you think's in charge, Doc? Detective, please come to the door. You answer that door and we're dead. You were followed. Secret military information, okay? Locations, missions, financials. Come on. The drive was originally on a 10-year lock with only the president having access to it. As of this morning, all of those encrypted passwords, unlocked. Hence why everybody's being let out, man. They really want that drive. Who had them? Just the president and the NSA. One went missing. What happened to it? Don't worry about it. I got it. Who's looking for it? Good question. Nobody knows. Whoever was looking for it then is looking for it now. Well, now it all makes sense. Lock up everyone involved for the last 10 years, flush out the drive, and when the drive unlocks, boom. 
and our mission from before, following a secret area of the government until the drive surfaces, and if it does, get it, capture it, hold it privately, and wait for further instructions. How did you get it? I was trailing an FBI agent named Klein. I intercepted a call, someone telling him to drop the file off at a remote location. Apparently I wasn't the only one who got that call. I show up, Klein's dead. The drive's still on him, completely untouched. And does anyone know you have it? I don't know, but somebody knows something, and they need it. We need to find out who, we need to find out why, we need to find them before they find us. Hey Ryan, wait for me in the barn out back. There's somebody I gotta meet first. Chief, I'm here, dog. Chief, where is it, Doug? What? The drive! Where's the drive? Chief, what's this about? It's what this whole thing's all about. Just give them what they want. Chief, I don't have it. Hello, officer. So you're behind this? Sort of. You think I could have gotten all those prisoners on my own? Where's the drive, Doug? I don't have it. You sure? He doesn't know anything, let him go. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Don't. <laughs> So I take you read the note I left at Robert Clayton. You calling your friends, Doug? Good. <laughs> I'll be starting to call Amy when all this is done. I think she'll need a great psychologist to talk to about her soon to be dead boyfriend. You touch her! I swear to God, I'll rip your throat out. <laughs> wow. Romantic. Sounds to me like you should put out a shut up! Why do you want it? You still don't know. Listen, I'm just trying to solve a few murders, huh? Do you want to help me out? Why don't we make a deal? Back up. Listen, turn around. Let's make a deal. You stop trying to kill me, and you let everyone else go that you planned on killing. 
I'll get you the drive. I can get it. You got three hours. Meet me at the north side prison back gate. You got that? Yeah. And Doug, don't bring any of your friends. It only complicate things for you. Scheduled meeting with a psychologist. Those guys really mess with your head, don't they? You all right? Yeah. Your partner says hello, by the way. And uh, don't bring any cops. And we have three hours to turn in the drive. Wait, wait. Okay. Where are we going to finish this? Someplace gorgeous, like a prison, at night, alone. You're gonna change, or you're gonna go like that. What do you mean? These are my clothes. Changing to what? Good point. Okay. Good talk. You're driving. I knew it. You know, it's too bad we have to leave. You really know how to live. Huh. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. It's super cozy here. I was kidding. Ryan, where's the drive? I have the drive. It's safe. Come on, we gotta go. Give me the drive, Ryan. Have you seen what's on this? No. Ryan, get out of the car and open the doors. We can't get out. Got it. It's amazing. All right, let's see what this is all about. Classified Operation Y2K, December 31st, 1999, National Security Agency. Mm. Scroll down. It's encrypted. Move. This is what I do. Oh my god. What? This isn't just military locations and launch codes, man. This is U.S. Treasury access. So you didn't know about this? No. Is the other drive the same thing? It should be. We gotta go. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I'm gonna ask you one more time. What happened the night you took this? I already told you, man. I was ordered to follow Klein. That call I intercepted, simple transfer. Data for payment. I have no idea who killed the guy. So the question is, who killed Klein, and why didn't they take this drop? Sure. All right, we gotta split up. All right, I'll cover you from the roof. I can't wait to see what happens when they find you with this. I'd hate to see what would happen if they found you with nothing.
Thought we agreed no friends. No friends? <laughs> what do you think, I'm stupid? Hmm? So did you bring it? This? I just got one question. Which one do you think it is? The drive that's not only gonna save your life, but your brother's as well. Speaking of, where is your brother? He wanted me to tell you hello, and he couldn't make it. He said he didn't want to be underdressed. The drive for his freedom. What happened, fellows? Late for your pickup on New Year's? I got it right here. It's over. We're done. It's never over! Check the drive. You're not gonna get away with any of this. What's really on it? What's in it for you? Oh, you're gonna see what's on it. Will we? Everybody was wondering, who's that guy? Who's killing people around my town? We haven't had one problem here. Guns blank! Should have been a dentist. You all right? No, Cap, I'm not all right. What took you guys so long? Sorry, the roads were icy. Northside Correctional, a privately funded ex-military prison, houses some of the most deadly ex-military personnel. It is believed that the cause of the recent attacks on this small, sleepy town was over a missing drive from the Y2K scare. This drive is believed to be a hoax. Really? The roads were icy. Well, that's why it took so long to get here. <laughs> you know, we want to just make sure that our response time so I guess it would be goffs down if we were, you know, a couple minutes late, right? Hey, Cap. Happy New Year. Never really been the time to think about what we cut. Mother and fuckers always talking down, making.
making assumption I paramedics coming to get you All in the stretcher, homie, don't mess with my chair I'll punch holes in your sweater Shit, when you move my biz eye Shit, I'm down for whatever Trunk, so making promises, I'll be back. 